In just about 20 minutes, I'm gonna be teaching you guys the basics of while loops through 10 different examples. We're gonna start by building your very first while loop and we're gonna expand on this uh, covering infinite while loops, utilizing while loops with inputs as well as lists. And finally, closing out the video by utilizing two while loops together to multiply numbers. There's gonna be a lot that we cover in this video in a short amount of time, but you're gonna be able to learn this skill set and apply this to your Python programming. All right, with that being said, I'm gonna code everything in Google Colab and let's start coding. All right, so let's take a look at our first example over here. We're gonna do example one. We're gonna do a basic while loop. while loop. And what's common with while loops is defining a variable outside of it. So in this case, I'm gonna say x equals one. And what we're gonna do is while x is less, x is less than 10, we're gonna print, which I need to put a colon at the end. We're gonna print x. Okay, and then towards the end of the loop, we need to define how we can increase this x number. One of the easiest ways to do it is x equals x plus one. So before I run this code, let me explain what is going on. Outside we defined x, we're saying x equals one. We're creating a loop. So while x is less than 10, so think of numbers one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine, right? 10, it's equal. So we're not gonna print that one out. We're gonna print out X. So we're gonna print out each of those numbers. And then after each time we print out that number, right? We start with one. X is gonna be equal to X plus additional one. So we go from one to two, two to three, etc. So let's run this loop. And you can see it printed one through nine. Okay. Let's print out another example over here. So. It's gonna be example number two over here. Let's define x equals one again. And this time what we're gonna do is have a sum. So we're gonna say sum equals zero. And we're gonna use the same exact code that we put above over here, right? So we're gonna say while well, x is less than 10. So we'll put while well, x is less than two. What we're gonna do is print. And in here we're gonna say number. And inside over here, we're gonna just say str x plus sum, and then I can just put my sum in here, plus str sum. And there's a lot of different ways we could print this out, but I'm just gonna do it like this, pretty basic. We're gonna copy over this x equals x plus one, and we're gonna add one other thing. We're gonna say sum is gonna be equal to sum plus x. And I should also mention a more efficient way of just writing this is sum plus equals x, uh, but I'm just gonna write it out like this so it's easier to read for those that are new to programming. So we're gonna put that out over here and let's run this. And you can see when we run one over here, right? We have no sum yet because we, we find some outside and sum is zero and we have the sum at the very end of this while loop. So it makes sense why we have nothing for our one. Now, when we go to number two, right? We're gonna go through this again. Um, so two is gonna be the first thing that populates over here, right? And this time we're gonna add on two, okay? And it keeps going three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And our sum continues to add up as well, right? Two plus three is five, plus four is nine, nine plus five, 14, 14 plus six is 20, 20 plus seven is 27, 27 plus eight, you get the point, right? We continue to, add to that sum. Okay, uh, one of the things that you're gonna have to be careful for when you're gonna be writing out while loops is called an infinite loop. So let me show you how you get into an infinite loop. So let's say we have over here x equals two, and then we're gonna say while x is greater than one, print infinite, infinite x equals x plus one. Well, what will happen here is we start at two, right? And that's greater than one. And then we add another one, we go to three. We add another one, we go to four, five, six, seven. Go to infinity because we have no way to stop this while loop. It's always gonna be true. We aren't gonna go backwards, just x is gonna continue to increase. 
So I'll run it for a second, but I'll also stop it. And you can see that this is an infinite loop, right? Let's stop this as soon as possible. You can see it just keeps printing infinite over here. And you don't want to have infinite while loops. I'm going to make sure that you have a way to stop it. So as you saw from earlier, and I'm just going to scroll up, this was less than 10, right? So as soon as x at 10, we stop this loop. This one, we're just looking at anything that x is greater than one. So make sure you build out your code where we can stop our while loops. You don't want to repeat the same exact issue. All right. So speaking of stopping our code, there's two different ways that we can essentially do this in some capacity. Uh, so we're going to be taking a look at both break and continue. So we're going to continue to follow this x equals one approach. So we're going to say x equals one. I'm going to say while x is less than 10, we're going to build out a quick if statement. So in here, we're going to say if x equals five, we're going to break. Okay. And then we're going to say print x. Then we're going to say x equals x plus one. Now let me run this code. You can see one, two, three, four five breaks or while loop. <clears throat> so you can build in a condition within a while loop and you can stop that while loop. Uh, you can see it didn't go all the way to 10 or to nine as the previous examples, right? One, two, three, four, as soon as it's five, it breaks the code. Well, there's also another way you could essentially write this out and we're gonna do this through continue and we're gonna have a little bit different results. So. We're gonna have x equals one while x is less than 10. If x equals five, I'm actually gonna put my x equals x plus one over here this time. So I'm gonna copy that. We're gonna put this over here and I'm also gonna put continue. And what continue essentially does is it skips over. So what you'll see what happens in this code, we go one, two, three, four, and we don't print five, right? So we essentially skip over that five example. In this case, where we have that if statement, and we go six, seven, eight, and nine. All right, let's show you some examples of while loops with input. So I'm gonna say while loops with input. And we're gonna say while true. Okay, well, true. And we're gonna say x equals input. And we can say over here, enter number. So enter number we're going to say if x equals z we're going to break right i showed you break a little bit earlier and then we're going to say print and then what we're going to do is multiply numbers so, so we're going to say int x and right now this is a string so that's why we're casting it as an int we're going to have times int x so we can enter in a number how many times we want, and we're gonna just keep squaring that number. So let's run this over here. So enter a number, let's just put in a basic one, which is 10, if you know 10 times 10 is 100. 100, right? Five times five, 25. 11, 121. So we can just keep printing this out, essentially like a calculator. But if we wanna exit out of this while loop, and no matter what number we put in here, it's gonna continue working, right? Six, we're gonna put four, like it doesn't matter. but when we put Z, the while loop stops. And you can see we built out the break, which is why it was important to learn break a little bit earlier in this lesson. But essentially what we can do with these while loops is pretty awesome is we can just keep running these um, for the application that we want. And we can have, we can essentially code a key uh, to stop this through break. Okay, let's do another variant of this. It's gonna be very similar, but We'll write this out. So we're gonna say x equals input. And what I'm gonna say is enter a positive number less than 20, okay? And then we're gonna say while int x is less than zero or int x is greater than 20, we're going to say someone put in the wrong number. So print wrong number, number, and then we're going to copy this x input 
once again. Okay. Otherwise, we're going to multiply this out. So we're going to just copy this code, print, and what this code essentially looks at is squaring a number, but this time we want to make sure our number is positive and that we want it greater than zero, right? So I put in over here, let's say 27. And I should have put a space over here. So let's let's redo this one really quick. I'm just going to stop this and rerun it. Okay, let's put 27 first. I guess I didn't say that, whatever. Um, it says wrong number, right? Positive number less than 20. And uh, let's put negative five, wrong number. Negative 11, wrong number. All right, let's put 11. 121, and it squares the number for us. So uh, you can add in conditions if you want on the side of things, but just another way um, to do this. Now, let's take a look at while loops with lists. So we're gonna say while loops with lists, and I'm gonna just move up my screen a little bit over here. So let's create a list. We'll say a list over here equals, and we'll just put in a bunch of different stuff. We'll say like one, four, six, seven, I don't know, I'm just writing random stuff, smashing my keyboard. Okay, I'll put one more over here. And we'll do, like earlier, we'll say sum equals zero. We'll say this time x equals zero. And we can sum a loop or sum a list. So we'll say while x is less than the length of a list, and I've covered lists in another video, but you can just put length list and I'll give you length. And we'll say and list, and we'll grab the specific list number over here is greater than zero. Let's say we just want to sum positives. So we can set that up. Or if you want to say like on a sum anything greater than five or only some negative numbers. We can add in that filter criteria over here. Uh, very common to see. So then we'll say sum equals sum plus list x. And just to show you again, the more efficient way that you would write this is sum plus equals list x. Uh, again, same exact thing. This is just a little bit faster. So feel free to use whatever one you want. I'm going to use firstly this one over here. And uh, then we're going to say x also plus equals one. And we're gonna say print the sum. Now we're gonna go through our entire list and we're gonna print this out. So it goes one, five, 11, 18, and it finishes off at 36. Okay, let's do another one over here. We're gonna actually make two lists or two sums based around this. And I'm just gonna copy this code. We're gonna make some small modifications. So again, just showing you stuff that we can do. Um, I'm gonna create an even sum. So even sum, and then we're gonna say odd sum. So odd sum, right? And inside over here, we're gonna add in an if statement. So again, we're gonna say if x, and if you put this percentage sign over here, two equals zero, this is a way to determine if something is an even number. So we'll say even sum, which we have here. Say so that's going to be plus equal. And we're going to throw over here our list x. So list x. Then we're going to say else, else. And we're going to just do the same thing for odd sum. Or odd sum over here. And then at the very end, we're just going to plus equal sets. Right. And I do we have an error? Well, I didn't set odd sum to anything. So odd sum equals zero. Uh, so this time we're going to separate our two different sums based off these numbers over here. So let's run this. And then outside this, we can have our even sum, which is 13, which makes no sense. Oh, I, I figured out my issue, which you guys are gonna think I'm dumb. But uh, I should have put list x over here. And uh, this should solve it. 24 and 12. Yeah, so I, my small mistake, and it's so easy to make these out here, but um, I'm taking a look. Originally, I had x. So 
it just went in order, right? One, two, one, two, like essentially like that. But when I should have been looking at this list item X and using this percent over here, divide by two equals zero. Uh, so this would go into odd, this would be even, even, odd. Where the first code that I had over here, it would just take a look at X. So X is zero, right? X is one, X is two. And that's why I had different numbers down below. Uh, this is the correct way. So while X is less than the length of list and our list item over here is greater than zero, uh, what well, we're looking at if the list, right, the number over here is percentage sign over here, two equals zero, which means it's gonna be an even number. Then we're gonna add the even sum, otherwise it's odd sum. And that's how you do that. <laughs> I kind of feel stupid. Uh, messing that one up, but you know, it's so easy to make mistakes. All right, so I just wanna show you one last example. We're gonna go to like example number seven and we're gonna do multiple while loops. So multiple while loops. So let's go through an example on how we do that. So I'm gonna initialize X out over here. We're gonna say X equals one and we're gonna say while X greater than equal to eight. Inside over here, we're gonna now say y equals one. And we can have while y less than or equal to three. Then we're gonna say result equals x times y, okay? And then we can print out information. So I showed you one way that we could print out variables a little bit earlier in the video, but this time we're gonna do F print over here. So we're gonna say print, we're gonna throw X in here, say times Y like this. We're gonna say equals, and we can throw a result in here. Result like that. Now, results, not results. Yep. And then we're gonna increase Y. So Y plus equals one. And then outside of this, now we need to say X plus equals one and should be good. So let's run it this right now. Forgot the colon. So make sure you throw the colon in there. And let me tab these over really quick too. This X needs to be tabbed over. Should be good now. All right, so X is one, Y is one one, right? Then we look at y is two, then y is three. So one, two, three. Then after that, we go back to this x over here, x plus one, and we increase that. So x is gonna go all the way one through eight, right? And we're gonna multiply it one, two, three across the board. So you can see one times one, one times two, one times three, then two, one, two, three, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight, all printed out. So just to recap this video for you guys, one last time, right? So a while loop is always gonna print while the statement is true. Uh, basically, uh, you wanna always have a way to exit a while loop. Otherwise you get something that's gonna be an infinite loop like we printed down below over here. You have to manually stop it, otherwise you can print forever. Um, one other way that you could break a while loop besides you know adding up a specific number or subtracting down is by implementing in a break if you do implement in a continue, uh, it'll skip over the number and keep moving to the next one over here. You can also use while loops for input, which is one really popular way of utilizing them. I'll show you a few different ways to do that. Uh, you can utilize them as well with lists. And lastly, over here, right? You can, you can split up a list if you want to also, which I show you that with my bug that I accidentally had, but that's good, I, I make mistakes as well. And lastly, you can also use multiple while loops uh, within each other. In this case, right, we looked at X on the outside and then we also looked at Y to multiply two numbers together. Hey, hope you guys are able to grab some value from this video and you understand how while loops work. If you did, make sure to subscribe to the channel. It's 100% for free and I upload a ton of videos every single week, anywhere from two to four videos. So make sure to stay tuned for those. Now, if you wanna continue to learn even more about loops, I have a full video over here on for loops and I have a few different videos and playlists down below in the description that I think you should check out.